My name is Mike Hislop. Today we're going to go over some basic uh, life support adjuncts into the airway, namely the oropharyngeal and nasopharyngeal airways, appropriate sizing and placement of both. Today we're going to go over the indication or reason for using an oropharyngeal airway. Uh, typically, this is going to be a patient who is unresponsive or has a severely diminished level of consciousness without a gag reflex. Conversely, the contraindication is going to be a person who is alert, not unresponsive, and has a maintained airway or a patent gag reflex. Today we're going to go over the proper sizing regarding the OPA and NPA airways. First and foremost, we're going to make our sizing from the center of the mouth to the angle of the jaw, the first method, or the preferred method, the angle of the mouth towards the end of the ear, and those are going to be our proper sizing. We can show here that being the proper size for this particular mannequin and or patient. Starting with a patient in the sniffing position or in the hyperflex position without cervical considerations, you're going to have two different placements. We're going to go at a 90 degree angle and rotate it into place, making certain that we are in fact holding that tongue in place. After it is in place, we have determined the patient does in fact have no, get no gag reflex and uh, can, you can go on with your further needs at that time. The second way of placing an OPA is using the angle into the hard palate and rotating 180 degrees until it rests again into place in the center of the mouth. Removal of OPA when our patient no longer needs it or has developed a gag reflex is sometimes something that has to happen relatively quickly. As any airway procedures, we prefer that you have suction at the ready for these instances. And typically, it can be done by removing outward in the anatomical following the mandible and making that removal fairly quick and painless.